Jim will come preach to us tonight, brother. I don't spit and slobber and all that stuff like he does, so I probably won't need any water. <laughs> I don't dry out too fast. <laughs> all right. Um, I really kind of, last week I had something on my mind that I was wanting to preach and uh, God really put it on my heart. And then this week uh, I was planning on, uh, I'd been working on that. And then something Reno brought up a few days ago just kind of started stirring something new and a and, uh, new message that really... Uh, I guess resonated, I guess you'd say, with me, um, not only because of where we're at um, in our business and in our lives, but um, where we came from. Um, because we had been in our lives um, in a place so many, for so many years, we said, one of these days, when God really blesses us and we have uh, extra then we'll be able to really be, we can't wait until that day comes so we can really be effective in ministry. And, uh, and it's funny to look back now how dumb that sounded <laughs> from where we're at now because yes, God has blessed us in some areas, but it wasn't about the things that he gave us that got us to that point. It was a, actually a change of attitude and heart that actually got us to that point. And I wanted to start out by reading um, in Matthew, I don't know if he's got it up here. Um, it's the parable of the talents. And it's in Matthew 25, uh, 14 through 30. And he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who's called his, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents to to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. Now, he gave them that according to their ability doesn't necessarily mean that he only blesses those who have abilities, but he gave them different ones according to their ability. And that could be because of their, where they were, uh, where they lived, how many people was running, whatever. That could be so many other things. But he says, um, then he who had received five talents, went and traded them, and made another five talents. Uh, when it says traded, he's talking about that he used them. Uh, he used them for a lot of different things, or it's not doesn't mean that he invested in the stock market or bought lottery tickets. It means that he actually went to work with them. <laughs> Other, and likewise, he that received two, more also. And, but he that received the one, dug in the ground and uh, go back yeah dug in the ground and hid his money his lord's money after a long time the lord of the servants of those servants came to settle accounts with them and so he had received and so he who had received the five talents brought five talents saying lord you receive to or you deliver to me five talents look I have gained five more talents besides them the Lord said well done good and faithful servant you are faithful over few things I will make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of the Lord he also received two talents came and said Lord you deliver me two talents look I have gained you two more talents besides them the Lord and the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. The same answer for both of them, whether it was the five or the two. And then he says, um, I'll go back to two talents. Um, <laughs> I lost my place. And he says, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talents in the ground. Look there, look there, you have what is yours. But the Lord answered him and said, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I did have not sown and gathered where I did not uh, 
scatter seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. Yeah, you, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and come and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him. Uh, he tells the others, take the talent from him and give it to him that had the 10 talents. For to those or to anyone who has more will I or will be given and and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have even that he was even that he has will be taken away. So the uh, one who had the one and buried it because he was afraid, not only did the Lord take away that talent, he also took away everything else he had. He cleaned him out because he was a wicked and lazy servant. Uh, the book of Luke, or uh, King James Version says slothful. And he says, and cast him into or cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Okay. We say, uh, they always use this um, story. It's always told as talents. Like um, they pretend that it's money or whatever that is. And, and the Bible is very specific in the, on many of the things that it's talking about. And he says talents. He doesn't say dollars or coins or whatever it is. He says talents. Um, but then on top of that, he said, or we always look at it as, yeah, he got a slap on the hand. No, he didn't get a slap on the hand. He says, be cast into outer darkness where there is wailing and gnashing of teeth. Okay. Um, there's only one that can cast you there. <laughs> and that's not, and then if you look at, and that's the point of, this parable if you look at the context of it it's not told about money it's not told about investing this is not a, a financial guru telling you how to invest your money the verse just before that it says watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the son of man cometh they're asking when Jesus is going to come again and that's when he tells the parable of the talents. Okay, so this is his instruction of how we are to behave in the kingdom. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man going to a far country. In the book of Luke, it says, it even goes further into who this man was. This He says, a man of royal blood is going to a land to receive a kingdom. That's Jesus. He is a man of royal blood going to heaven to receive the kingdom. He will be coming again. And that's when he's going to find out what we did with our talents. Mm -hmm. Not with our dollars. Not with our cents. With our talents. And so many years, like I said, so many years, my wife and I said, you know what? One of these days, God's going to give us more. We're going to have so much that we can, we can do so much for so many. And I know that yeah, a lot of these places you get, um, and it's sad that a lot of your richer churches, they say, well, um, when we got enough money in the, in the funds, we can do so much for so many people. Um, you will find less hard workers in a big church than you'll find in a small church. I've been to a lot of big churches. You will find less hard workers in a big church. Because everyone says, oh, there's plenty of people. Somebody else will do that. Right. <laughs> there's not plenty of people. Right. The bigger the church, the less people's going to do anything. Right. Because they depend on someone else to do it. Yeah. Oh. So that's one of the things that we were talking about the other day. Um, my wife and I was discussing the uh, going out into ministry and the, and the um, callings that God will give us. I said, I have no doubt that if today a tornado hit... And we went to feed the people. Half the church would go with us. Amen. I can guarantee you. In the church we left. Less than half people. I guarantee you there'd be less people from that big church to go. Than there is out of the small churches that would go. And that has to do with the heart condition. That's how we feel. That's our where we're at with God. 
Because it's not about how much we have, it's about what we do with what we have. What we do, that's why he used, that's why he just didn't say the five and the one. He went with the five and then the two and then the one. Because he wanted to show us that whether I give you five or two, you can still be faithful. You can still be blessed and go into the joy of the Lord. So it's not about what you have, how much you have. It's about whether you're willing to use it or bury it. That's where we, come back to. That's where we go back to the, um, when he speaks of the uh, laziness. He says, you wicked and slothful, yeah. wicked and yeah. lazy. Yeah. Okay. And there is, and if you know anything about, well, most of you don't know. I was raised from my dad, his, everything that he spoke of. The man or a man was always judged by his work. That's just the way I was raised. If you worked, it, you was a hard worker. I was since I was this tall. My dad always. Why can't you be like Sammy Brock? Why can't you be like Sammy Brock? <laughs> Sammy Brock lived down in Silverville, and that kid would at five years old. He was on a tractor mm -hmm. helping his dad with something at. 12 years old, his dad got his hand caught in a corn picker. Yeah. At 12 years old, Sammy Brock loaded his dad in a truck and ran him to the hospital. He wasn't even allowed to be driving, and he drove his dad to the hospital. Sammy Brock, I don't know that Sammy Brock has ever not worked a day in his life. I mean, he is a worker. But he was so well known in our area because he was a hard worker, not because he was a brilliant uh, archaeologist or an astronaut, but because he was a hard worker. He was well known in our community. But he's a great, and if you ever know Sammy Brock, he's just an excellent person. Um, but Sammy Brock, man, he was, dad raised four of us kids. And it was always, why, you need to be like Sammy Brock. Well, I found out at about probably 11 years old, I started doing all the chores. And man, dad just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. I just jumped in and just started doing all kinds of stuff. And I was so blessed that my father saw me so much better because I was a hard worker. Oh. And it I it pleased my father that I wasn't lazy. Yeah. And I always thought um, a lot of people they say, well, I don't know if you should make your kids work that. Well, wait a minute. My dad set an example to us right. yeah. that it pleased him that I wasn't lazy. Is that not the exact same thing? That our Heavenly Father is asking us. It pleases Him when we're not lazy. Because this lazy servant put buried in the ground. And he's into outer darkness with wailing and gnashing of teeth. But anything is better than nothing. Anything, if you can do something. So we were discussing earlier. I said, I saw it. Or we always talk about. Uh, we always think that if we have more, then we can do more. And that's not necessarily true. Just this past week, we were laughing about how many people needs, I mean, people even in a paper begging for somebody to clean off their driveway. Now, first thing everybody starts thinking is, I can make $10 on that driveway. I can make $20 off that driveway. I can make, yeah, but that $10 is going to go as soon as you go to McDonald's. But how much more good could you do cleaning off somebody's driveway and saying, you know what? The Lord told me to come clean off your driveway. Well, that's that's dollars that can't be spent. That's storing up. That's that's building a testimony with that person that that person may come to know Christ later, or or be blessed in their lives because you took care of something that they needed. Those are the talents he's talking about using. Those are the things he's saying. I gave you the ability to do this. Why are you still sitting on the couch at home? Why are you still saying, you know what, I can just sit and watch TV all day. I've got nothing else to do. But there's widows and or there's people all over the place that are sitting in. They can't dig their way out. They can't move their car. But you can say, well, I don't have a good snow shovel because I didn't buy one from last year. Got a scoop shovel. Got a regular square shovel. Any kind of shovel. I love you one. It's not about how nice your shovel is. Even. <laughs> it's about the fact that you'll get your off your butt and go help somebody. Yes. And the world needs help. The world needs hope. And we can't give them hope. And like they always, uh, everybody always says, the, one of the favorite uh, terms is, 
they don't want to know who you know until they know that you love. And that's the whole point of the feeding, the going out and feeding the hungry, going out and taking care of people. Um, the Bible clearly states that we're to take care of the, wit or the uh, uh, widows. We're supposed to get out there and feed the widows. And we're supposed to take care of the shut-ins. That is our job. And we can complain all we want that the Red Cross ain't getting there or the government ain't getting there. But that's not their job. Nowhere in the Word does it say that the Red Cross will get there. It says that you're supposed to get there. So if we ain't getting there, if we're not doing it, then what are you going to do when the Master comes back from this trip? Just like that song you just said, they just sang that song at the midnight cry. He's not coming at midnight. They use the word midnight because most of us will still be asleep. That's why it's midnight. That's why they use the term midnight. Because no one's going to know when it happens. And it's going to be too late then to say, oh, wait a minute, i got to go shovel somebody's driveway off. And it's too late. <laughs> you had that shovel in the garage and you were still watching the Kardashians. And she's still crying because she can't get her car out to go get her mail. We have to get out there and do the jobs that he asked us to do and get busy. And it's one of the greatest things. And the um, we always talk about, um, of course, one of the toughest job or parts about our job is finding workers. Um, everybody knows we struggle with that constantly. And everybody who know, owns a business knows that um, finding somebody who will work and whether it become uh, whether it's dishes or. Uh, running the grill or whatever. Everybody wants to be a waitress because that pays the most. Uh, but we get people all the time that say, well, I'll, um, I, I, I don't know if I can work for that much. Or, or okay, well, wow. they say, well, um, I've managed here or I've managed there, so I need to find a job in management. Okay, that, that's fine. Uh, you may be applying for a job for management in GM, for instance. Um, but God's sitting up there and he's saying, but will you do dishes? Right. Right. Will right. you, will you flip hamburgers? Woo. If you'll do that, if you're faithful with the little, yeah. I'll give you much. Yeah. I cannot tell you how many people has come to work for us. Amen. Bobby, one of them, I love him to death. He came to work for us way too smart to be flipping burgers. Came to work for us anyway. One of the most fun people that ever stepped foot in our kitchen. We had a blast with him. It was like a an era in our kitchen. And everybody enjoyed it when Bobby was there. He was a comedian and a hard worker. And it wasn't very long. He worked for us for two months, I think. Less than two months. And he's working at GM. and got a great job at GM. And we love him to death. We've had, in fact, we had one guy. His name was Stephen King, literally. <laughs> and he had a doctor's degree and he worked for us flipping burgers yeah. with a doctor's degree he had moved back here and he was getting ready to open his own dental practice in Bloomington but he came and flipped burgers in the meantime Praise he has more of my respect than yeah. most doctors on the planet yeah. because he was willing to work at Maybe. something until I get what I want Hallelujah. and God blessed him to be able to get through that. And it didn't take him too long to get his practice up and going. God blessed him through that. Because he was willing to calm down and do something. Something is always better than nothing. Yeah. To, to, get, yeah. to get busy doing something. Yeah. But even in the kingdom. And those are the things where we earn a living. But God sees those too. God wants to bless every single one of us. And the Bible even says that it is will, it is uh, God's will that all of us should be blessed. We, he, he wants to pour out on every one of us. But are we blessable? Yeah. And that's one of the things we, we have to... I always ask people... I always try to tell the guys in the kitchen especially. I always try to tell them, are you blessable first? I can tell you this. <laughs> I always tell them this. When I was 25 years old, um, I was an idiot. I was a long way from growing up. <laughs> I had... Um, I had... <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I still am. I had invented this thing called a roller cleaner and I could put a roller in it and it would clean a roller in like 90 seconds or 60 seconds or whatever. Anyway, it was amazing. It was fast and everybody who I worked for loved that thing. They wanted me to make one work. Uh, it would clean out paint rollers. And I talked to a company and they said that they could buy the patent and, 
and I could make five to eight million dollars plus royalties. And boy, I'm thinking at 25 years old, hey man, this is gonna be awesome. Okay, I said, God, if, and I pray. I mean, I pray. I said, God, if you'll bless me with this five to eight million dollars, I will serve you and I will take care. I will do so much for you. And today, looking back, I'm 52. Man, I pray. Thank you, God, for not giving me that. I was an idiot. And I know that. And if I had gotten five to eight million dollars, I probably wouldn't be alive today. Because I was an idiot. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. She met me at 28. <laughs> I was an idiot. And if I had gotten five to eight million dollars back then, where would I be today? I'd probably be dead. I wasn't into drugs, but I was an idiot. So, <laughs> so God knows, just like our heaven or our earthly fathers, a good earthly father, God, our heavenly father, knows if what you're asking for is good for you or bad for you. If you're praying for that new Mustang with the uh, beefed up engine, God's saying, you know what? I'm seeing you six months down the road around that light pole. Sorry, not getting it. If you're asking for that brand new house, God, please let me get that. We put in an offer on it. God's seeing you three down, three years down the later, you're going to mess up and lose your job and you're not going to be able to hang on to that house. Sorry, not going to give it to you. Everything, we have to understand that the things we don't have are a blessing. The times he says no, sometimes is a better blessing in most cases, is a better blessing than the times he says yes. We have to get ourselves here in our heart to where we're blessable. Now, today, if God gave me Five to eight million dollars, I can guarantee you we'd be broke in a short period of time. Not because I'm as much as an idiot as I won't say I'm not an idiot. Not as much as an idiot as I was back then, but I know that little lady back there has got way big or way too big a heart. <laughs> we would give it all away. I guarantee you we would give it all away. We'd have nothing in a short period of time. And God knows that. And that's why he's not given us monetary things in the way that we could, the things that we would give away. But he gives us what we need. Yeah. And he yeah. takes care of everything we could yeah. possibly need. And then a slight bit more to see what we do with it. Yeah. And to see what we do with that little bit above our needs is where we find the talents. We got to find out, are we using that little bit more than he needs? Are we tithing the way we should, first of all? And then if he gives us a little above that talent or that uh, tithe, are we taking care of our neighbor who needs a new mailbox, maybe? Or who needs us just to go out and set the mailbox for them? Yeah. They may not be able to, but there is always, every single day of your life, you're going to see somebody needing something. There's always somebody needing something. And those same people who are needing something all need him. Amen. And if we say, yeah, you know what? Their son's perfectly healthy. He can go do it. Well, maybe their son doesn't have the servant heart because he hasn't seen it in you. Yeah. He needs to see it in someone else. Right. When, his, when their son sees the neighbor walk over and set their mailbox... And he looks up to you and says, wow, that was awesome. I want to be like him. Right. Maybe he doesn't have a servant heart because he hasn't seen you with one. Right. Because you're saying, well, he'll get it eventually. They got a perfectly healthy son. He can do it. I know we've got a neighbor and his, their son's like 15 years old. And she was out shoveling her driveway off yesterday. I went out with the backhoe. Of course, it doesn't take me too long to do it. I cleaned her driveway all off and everything. Not that I want any kind of glory for that. I'm, they're sweet people. Right, right. But their son needs to see that example. Yes. By another man. Yes. He needs to see someone else who's willing to give up their time to help someone else. Because that's where he finds, who do I want to be? Do I want to be the one who sits in the house all the time? Or do I want to be the guy like him who comes over and cleans our drive when no one's paying him for it? And we set an example. Every single one of us men are setting an example for someone else's son. Yes, and every single one of us women are setting an example for someone else's daughter. Yes, what kind of example are we setting? And those are some of our talents as an example. God calls us to be an example to other people. 
And you would have no idea how many people watching. I told my wife the other day, I said, you, you would be shocked if you knew how many people look up to you to see what you do day in and day out. Your kids, your grandkids, sometimes it's the neighbor kids. You have no idea how many people look up to you wondering what you're going to do. I remember when I was a little kid looking up to Sammy Brock because dad talked about him all the time. I want to be so like him because he was a worker. He wasn't real tall, a little short kid, but man, he was a worker. I wanted to be like him so bad because it pleased my father. We need to please our father that others, when they want to be like us, they please our father because we can't lead them to him unless we're walking the way we should be. We're using the talents he gives us. That may just be a square point shovel. Who knows what it is? But doing something. I watched him walk around and cleaning everybody's driveway off. He said he cleaned a couple, but he was going around here cleaning all around here, cleaning everybody's off <laughs> yesterday. But there's so many, and I'm I'm blessed for being around him. He's a big goober, but I'm, I'm <laughs> blessed by being around him because I have known so many pastors that wouldn't take the time to clean off the driveways for the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. That's someone else in the church's job. That's, that's below me. Someone else needs to do that. And they think that they're, a, they're above the menial labor. There's no such thing as above menial labor. I don't care where you're at. We have um, in our kitchen all the time, Jerry Ann will be back there. She just jumps in and does the dishes if we get behind. Um, and Alex will come up to her all the time. You don't need to be doing the dishes. Uh, let me do them. You don't need to be doing dishes. She said, why do I not, or why shouldn't I be doing dishes? It doesn't matter if you own the company. You can still do dishes, mop floors, clean. You do all the things that everyone else, it doesn't matter how many people's under you. I always tell them 90% of the weight of any successful company is carried on the backs of its lowest paid workers. Yes, sir. They're the ones who come in and they work their butts off. Yes, and if a business owner ever forgets that, they don't deserve to be in business. Right. Those are the people that make you who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's sad to see so many big companies with CEOs and things like that that look down on their people because they're beneath them. There's nobody in our business that's beneath us, ever. Yeah. We love everybody that works for us. And that's something that everyone deserves respect. Doesn't matter where you're at in life. Amen. They deserve respect. Amen. Because people are hungry for someone to care and show them some respect. Amen. And we have a society that is, a, they think people are disposable. They'll, um, you're lower paid. I always talk, tell the story about in 1962, uh, John F. Kennedy was walking through Nassau on a tour and he saw a guy mopping the floors and he asked him what he was doing and he said, I'm putting a man on the moon. Woo! He yeah. was mopping floors and to anyone else that was a menial job just cleaning a building. But to him, he was part of an organization yeah. that was putting a man on the moon. Yeah. So that mop, he was putting a man on the moon. There's no small people. Wow. It's just... It's it's an attitude. It's how you see what you do. Are you part of the team or are you not part of the team? And that's where I tell everybody in the kitchen all the time. We're on we're on a team here. Uh, there's no certain person that's allowed to rebound and no one else is. Everyone's allowed to. We all work together at the same job. If there's somebody not doing dishes, anybody jumps in and does dishes. Everybody jumps in and, at times. So there's no lower guys, bigger guys. We need to all understand that in the, this talents thing, that's why the two and the five, are they get the same reward. It doesn't matter what God gave you. What are you doing with it? Yeah. it doesn't, and he gave us all the Son of God. He gave us all Jesus. What are you doing with him? Are you sharing him with them? Because not only are we supposed to get out there and do something, because... The fact, the fact of the matter is the Bible calls us the hands and feet of God. Yeah. And if we're not doing something, then the hands and the feet of God are doing nothing. Hmm. And God won't be without doing anything. So he's going to find someone else to do something. Right. So now, if you're part of God that's not doing anything, what are you, the, the appendix? Yeah. <laughs> or, so, uh, you know what they do with appendixes? They cut them out throw them in the trash. Yeah. So... We have to make sure that we're the part that's doing something. We're the part that's 
Whether it be sharing the gospel with somebody, getting out there and shoveling somebody's driveway, doing something. Because there is no place in his word where slothfulness is elevated, lifted up, or blessed. Nowhere. Laziness is always a curse in the in Bible. God honors a hard worker and someone who has compassion for others. And I can tell you now, you can love your mother to, to the end of the world. If her driveway needs cleaned off, you'll be right on it. But if someone else's mother's driveway is covered in snow does that bother you too so it has to be about all of them not just about those that's closest to you it has to be about everyone and we have to learn to be his hands and feet find an opportunity in the next few days to get out there and do something they're supposed to get two and a half inches of snow tonight find an opportunity to get out there clean somebody's driveway off, do something for somebody, even if it's getting their mail and bringing it to them, if they yes. ask them first, <laughs> yes. hey, would you, don't just open their mailbox, <laughs> say, would you like for me to bring your mail to you, shovel their drive off, do something for somebody, because there's a lot of people out there that can't get out into this weather, it's too cold for them, they're not healthy enough to get out into it, do something for somebody, because he did everything for us. He did everything for us. And he has blessed us. When God sees you faithful with a little, he'll bless you with much. And we can't ever ask him for much until we're willing to do with what we have. And get out there and shovel a driveway or do something for somebody. So just remember that as you go out tomorrow. As you get out there um, with the snow coming on. Uh, snow day doesn't mean lay around and do nothing all day. A snow day sometimes just means this is the day I'm off work so I can do the ministry. So I can get out and reach people. This is the day God gave me to do this. Yep, and you don't need credit for it. You don't need money for it either. That's, if you're out there uh, charging a fortune for shoveling somebody's sidewalk off, then you're making money. And the Bible says that you got your... Uh, when you get paid for that, that's your reward. Yeah. You're not getting paid. Um, you're not be gaining reward in heaven if you're charging them for shoveling their driveway. But if you're shoveling their driveway, um, and I understand there's people out there that have a business doing that. And that's understandable. That's what they do. That's their business. But when it comes to going out and just grabbing a shovel and digging out their car or whatever, or pulling somebody out of a ditch, you can't always charge somebody everything or money for everything. Because if that's what it is, then you're God's money. Yeah. There's a whole world of difference there. That's a whole other sermon. <laughs> we have to be careful though. We do it because we love them. We should love them with a compassion the way he loved us. Amen. That it moved him to go to the cross. It should at least move us to pick up a shovel. Amen. So, with that being said, I'll go ahead and pray and we'll, I guess... Um, so they set up or whatever. <laughs> you got anything else you want to say? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, man, I'll tell you what. Uh, it's spot on tonight, brother. Uh, and the amazing thing is, as a pastor, you get to know so many people, uh, especially within the church. And so as I was looking around today, I thought about Shara back there uh, working uh, for the post office and, uh, I saw a post today where she said that uh, uh, she was so thankful because when you do something and you do it well and you do it because you love what you're doing and because you respect the opportunity to be given, people will give you that respect in return. And so she was thankful today that people had cleaned off the areas. Just something as simple as to where you have to pull up to get, put your mail in to the mail slot. Uh, she was thankful for that. And I think about Jason and Mandel and eight kids and everything that they're going through and trying to work a job on the side. And man, Heather can tell you, uh, I almost want to get on to Jason at times because he's as horrible as a contractor as I was. <laughs> because I would always think I'm, going, I'm good at what I do. I'm a great concrete finisher. And Heather would say, but you never charge anything. You never charge enough. <laughs> We're going to the poor house and your body's going to be broke down. And There's a lot of truth in that. And, and uh, I, man, I, think, I see Jason and, and Nicole and 
uh, what started out as just serving others now has turned into a business where uh, you guys are benefiting and may not have all the wealth and all the riches of the world, but look at the smiles on their faces. Amen. Huh? Isn't that amazing? I think about Chad. Chad, he, he'll drive you crazy. He, he follows me around the church and says, man, what do you want me to do? Is there anything to do? Is there something to do? Uh, I just need something to do, man. I, I'm like, I'm bored, man. You know, I'm like, man, dude, you have like residual crack effect. Uh, uh, <laughs> but he'll do anything. He'll do anything uh, that we ask him to. And I think about my good friend Brent that's here tonight. Uh, I love you, brother. Uh, think about a little Mitchell boy, man, lived across the river and we used to rough house and fight and run the taverns and all that stuff. And because he works hard, uh, uh, he gets an opportunity to do things that maybe some of us only dream of. I mean, he gets to work with Chase Briscoe Racing and, uh, and uh, Sprint Cars and he gets to do a lot of fun things. Because he put in a lot of hard work. That didn't happen overnight. It wasn't just like yesterday that they said, Hey, Chase, we're going to put you in a NASCAR. Uh, and all these people that have been with you, uh, we're just put people there. It was a lot of years of changing sprint car tires and working on midgets and burning your arms on exhaust and all those little things that happen before you ever get to that place. Think about Jay back there, man. Uh, I can't tell you how many times he's saved me. They call me the mangler because mechanically when I work on something, I break it. Uh, I snap things. My body doesn't know torque specifications. Uh, and so Jay has seen me out in weather just like we have right now, cold and come and just said, stop. Just let me put the alternator in that truck before you tear it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and I'm so thankful for that. What a great, 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 great message tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, what a great word. Brother Prince out of here tonight, man. What a great, great word tonight, man. I, I will say this, that one of the things that Jim and I talked about, and I think I mentioned it Sunday, and I think it was one of the things that he was talking about, is that, uh, and I don't even remember what, what the dollar value was. Let's say it was, let's say it was 1150 or something, right? You know, I don't even remember. But I remember, like, I share their post whenever they share a post about having an opening for a job. Because I always hear people say, well, I'm looking for work. Uh, and so they had a post and it said, like, hey, we've got a job. I don't know, doing something in the kitchen or maybe washing dishes or whatever. And let's say it starts out at 1150 an hour. And I thought about how often they've told me that they can't find somebody to fill that position or to fill that job or to take that place. And I'm amazed at how many people sit around and do nothing for no dollars an hour as to go to work and do dishes for $11 an hour. And that's the society that we live in today, man. People, uh, if, if their talents aren't being given to them at the rate they expect it, they don't even want them. Right. <laughs> and to me, that's, that's the craziest thing. It's one of the craziest things in the world that we live in today. And I always say one other thing. That is the only time I've ever heard any of them Brock boys ever referred to as little. Little Sammy Brock. Huh? They ain't not one of them. They ain't not one of them dudes little. <laughs> Your great message, my brother. Pray it's out of here. All right. Dear Lord, we